Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday, praise God. And all through this week, we've been sharing some great stuff. If you are just joining us today, I would, I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, search for, especially this week, from Monday, everything we've been talking about. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, why don't you just do that right now? You can just... I mean, if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on WhatsApp or any other, just go to the original um, where the message is coming from, which is YouTube, and subscribe to our channel. And then share this message with everyone you know. Help us share these truths. Let more people get educated in God's Word. And that's how we all increase in the knowledge of God. And the more we increase in the knowledge of God, because we believe His Word, we are developing that character of Him in us. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle this whole weekend. Let God increase His grace and power in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now then, I was sharing with you yesterday how God exercises judgment. So we've talked about Him exercising loving kindness. And, and, and you just need to listen to the message again and again. And then He exercises loving kindness. He also exercises judgment. So yesterday I was talking to you about judgment. And every, everything will be judged. Everything will be judged. And like I said, judgment is not just all about evil. Say, judgment, God will judge you. And judgment, that doesn't just mean the person, God will break his head. No. Even you that was hurt, there's judgment coming for you. That's why it pays that you understand God. See, when we talk on these things, we always refer to David because now that's because David was one person that was able to reflect God's character in his dealings with people. You remember when that same season Absalom took um, let, 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 me, let me share something with you. How, now, when you look at God displaying judgment, it's now as though he's not the same person that was displaying loving kindness. So you now wonder, but what, what, why, after God has forgiven me, why would he start, still allow evil to come to me? Now that's one thing people don't understand. They think it's all about God. No, it's not all about God. For example, I was talking to you about the vagabond spirit yesterday. The vagabond spirit doesn't come from God. The vagabond spirit comes from the earth. You see, that's why the vagabond spirit most times is it comes as a result of shedding innocent blood. And the the it, it doesn't come from God. It's not God that releases the vagabond spirit. The moment you shed innocent blood, the moment you are involved with murder of, of people that are innocent, it will stir up that vagabond spirit. And the job of the vagabond spirit, because it comes from the earth, its job is to see to it that you'd never get settled in life. Now, in the midst of that, if you understand that God, he loves to exercise loving kindness as well as he allows judgment to take place. You will now understand that in the midst of judgment, you can expect his loving kindness. Now this is, this is, I said, I said something yesterday. I said, the problem is not that that judgment would destroy you. The problem is, would you have the capacity in you at the time of judgment to believe God? 
So you remember when David was running away from Absalom, one of those times. And there was this fellow named Shimei. Now Shimei, I'm telling you the stories and I expect you to go read yourself, go study them yourself. These are in the Bible, okay? So David was escaping and then Shimei saw David. He was one of those that didn't like David, okay? So he began to curse David. And he began to say things like, finally, God has caught up with you. So he was saying, judgment has come on David for what David did to the house of Saul. But then you know David did nothing to the house of Saul, but show them loving kindness. You know that, right? But now, you see, that's the thing about life. Not everybody knows the truth. Not everybody understands the truth. Some people from outside see what they want to see and they begin to judge you like that. So Shimei was there and was shouting, finally, God has caught up with you. So you destroyed the house of Saul and you took over the truth. Now, God that does not sleep, have come to deal with you, even your own son. Now imagine that kind of thing. And so one of David's men said something. He says, look, let me just go cut off this guy's head. And David said to him, no, don't, don't do it. Because David knew, I pray for you that the day judgment comes, your mind will be able to link it because you see, the problem is when judgment comes to a lot of people, they don't know or sometimes they are in denial and before they know what's happening, it sweeps them off. The day judgment comes to you, it's not for your destruction. Ah. Even if you are guilty, that very moment if you can still trust in the Lord who justifies the ungodly now I know I, I know some will come after me and say but the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus doesn't stop judgment from coming it doesn't the blood of Jesus will not stop the spirit of the vagabond but it is your faith blood of Jesus Christ that will keep you from suffering Because some people think, oh, old things are passed away. The demons don't take it that old things are passed away. The spirit of the vagabond spirit doesn't consider that old things are passed away. It considers you and is keeping its grudge against you. But now it is you having faith in the blood of Jesus Christ today that will make you um, overcome when that judgment comes. If you sink, you know, he says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength was small. He didn't say God couldn't save you. He didn't say um, the devil was too strong. He said your own strength was small. What do you mean your own strength? Not just physical strength. Even your faith becomes your strength. So when your faith is small, when you have no faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, or in faith, no faith in God. For example, David didn't have the blood of Jesus Christ to atone for him, but he was able to escape judgment. Now, you, I was telling you the Shemel story. And, and when David heard Shemel, his servant said, let, uh, let me go finish this guy. David knew that any attempt to destroy this man will be to, to put, expose himself for destruction. David knew. David knew this thing is coming from somewhere. He knew. He was smart enough to know. So he told his son, I said, ah, 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 don't do it. Leave him alone. Let him curse me. He says, look, you don't understand how my own son come, came after me and took the throne from me. He said, allow him to curse. Paradventure God will hear his cursing and show me mercy. What a man. What a man that understood God's person. David, that's why God looked at David and said, I love this guy. He's a man after my heart. He thinks like me. Because some of you, you've done wrong. Today you see judgment coming. What are you trying to do? You're trying to prove righteousness. No! Uh, 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 uh. When judgment comes like that, 
the thing that will save you is number one, your patience and steadfastness. Number two, your faith in the Lord. That's why David said concerning Shimei, he said, it may be that the Lord have commanded him, go curse David. So he, David understood that in the midst of all this judgment, God will be looking for how to exercise loving kindness to him. So he said, the way God wants to display, it may just be. He wasn't sure, but because he understood the ways of God, are you getting what I'm saying? He, he felt, mm -mm, it's not normal for these small rats. Permit me to use that word. It's not normal for this, this, this little guy to just wake up and be cursing me. He knows I can kill him. So mm -mm, it's not normal. It may just be that God have said to him, Go curse David so that God will hear his cursing and have mercy on me. So if God is waiting to hear his cursing so that he will show me mercy, why then should I stretch out forth my hand to destroy him? When I destroy him, God will say, ah, I even came to save you, but you proved yourself as a destroyer, so my hands are off. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you? How the day of judgment a lot of people have removed the hand of mercy by trying to prove that they are right, trying to prove that I cannot be wrong. You've done wrong, you've committed iniquity and judgment is coming. Now you remember what the prophet told David, Holy Spirit, thank you for grace. The prophet had said to David that, hey David, because of what you have done to Uriah and, and, and with Beersheba, your sword from your own house will trouble you. And he said, he said to David, he said, he will take your wives and he would, uh, he would sleep with them upon the roof. He said, you did your own in secret. He will do his own in the open heavens. Now he says, your son, one from your own house, will take your wives and will do this to me. Now, do you know the truth? When Absalom came against David, I told you, David, depending on the Lord, the Lord told him to carry his wives. So David carried his wife, but left behind some concubines. Now there's a difference between a wife and a concubine. So while he was going, deliberately he left behind some concubine, none of his wives. And then Absalom came and carried those wives in fulfillment of that prophecy, carried those concubines and you know the story, he slept with them upon the roof. He was giving that instruction, he was giving that counsel by Ahithophel. And you see, but, but then, even in that prophecy being fulfilled, you can see that God stepped in to show David loving kindness because he had repented. His repentance never stopped judgment from coming. But what has repentance done to David now? In the day of judgment, the wisdom of God was available. Now that is not available for people that don't repent. I Hmm. Because you have repented, it will not stop the judgment from coming. But this is what repentance does to you. In the day of judgment, the wisdom of God will be available to guide you through judgment so that you will see the loving kindness of God in the midst of judgment. So judgment will be satisfied, yet God is still showing kindness to you. So how come the prophecy said he would do this to your wives? But eventually who he did it to was, were not his wives, but concubines. Now you know in, in, in those days, a king can have as many concubines. Now who are concubines? Concubines are people the king just liked and then he decides to um, have sexual relationship with them. Now some, some of the king's concubines, he may just see them once and never see them again. But the thing about the king's concubine is the moment the king likes you, nobody can like you in that whole town. Nobody can like you. You are, you are doomed for life. You be, you're the king's property. 
Even if the king doesn't see you again, you are his property. He'll be taking care of you. And you, de- you can't go marry anybody. That's the problem with concubines. See? So, a, the, the, a sin against the concubine will not pain like the sin against your wife. Are you seeing how God showed David loving kindness? The prophecy said, wives, the fulfillment happened to concubines. Mercy and judgment. Now I'm, I'm, I'm bringing the two. Mercy, loving kindness in the midst of judgment. Why? Because David was smart enough to trust in the Lord, right in the midst of judgment. If David had tried to exert his skill against Absalom, now truly speaking, David would have David had men that could have finished Absalom. But David understood that if he kills Absalom, judgment will not be satisfied. What would that mean? Judgment will come. If he destroys Absalom, he could have done it like this. But guess what? The next judgment that is going to come will be more sophisticated. Because now, the judgment have seen, that's the spirit of Vagabona, have seen that David had men that can kill him when he strikes. So what will he do? He will first of all destroy all those men or separate them from David. Then he would strike. So sometimes it's good to allow judgment come early. My God, I pray the Lord give you understanding. I pray the Lord give you understanding. This is not to say, oh, you can go sin and God will show you love again. God will always be God. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But you know the story? For example, Shimei's case. You know the story. Uh, David saved him at that time. But then later when David was handing over to Solomon, his son, he spoke to him concerning all those that did him evil, including Shimei. He said, remember Shimei, that guy did me so great evil. Um, Use your wisdom to deal with him. Because... David knew that what Shimei did to him will, will bring judgment on his life. But David decided never to tamper with him. Even after David's throne was restored, he could have called Shimei and said, Shimei, so you have mind. Huh? He could have killed him as king. But David was still conscious that I would not use my own hand. Uh-uh. So he told Solomon, he said, Solomon, use your wisdom. And what did Solomon do? Solomon sets a trap for him. So much so that he was executed. Not because Solomon hated him. Not because Solomon was calling forth his father's, the iniquity he did to his father. But he committed his own iniquity that swallowed him up. So Solomon told him, look, you, I'll let you live. As long as you don't step within the parameters of this city. Have you heard me? The day you step out of this city, you're dead. And that death is on you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. And one time he heard a servant of his had stolen from him and had ran out of the city. Greed. You see, that's what happens to wicked people. Their own iniquity will destroy them. So his blood was not on any man. That's exactly what Solomon told him. His servant stole from him. He forgot the covenant he had with Solomon and chased the servant across the border and came back glad and smiling. And Solomon sent for him. He said, Oga, where are you coming from? I thought we had a deal. You have broken the deal. Now that you have broken the deal, what do you expect me to do? I'm sorry. And that's how he was executed. The same judgment. May God give us understanding. Sometimes these things are hard. 
But when you have the knowledge of God, you can split, you can, you can walk through them. And this is what God does to us. He brings us his understanding. He brings us his understanding. I pray for you today that the understanding of God's truth will fill your heart because you need this to live a good life. You need this to live a healthy life with healthy understanding. May God fill your heart with his knowledge. May God fill your heart with his wisdom. All the stories written in scriptures, may the Lord give you understanding so that you will know how to live your own life and be victorious, even in the face of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever.